said to the wisdom. Some are criticizing that uh, you don't have a standing 11. What do you say about it? We have a standing 11. Because when you look at the, from the first week to death, it's the same set of players that we are using. So nobody can say we don't have a standing 11 to stand the match. It's from uh, Wiki Torres home there in Bauchi against Lobby Stars. They are taking you around the world of sport. You are welcome on the show of 360 Sport. That's just uh, to have, let you have a feel of what happened over the weekend between the two clubs that play at uh, different stadia in Nigeria. MPFL and also NNL will be taking more on that. Welcome you uh, properly on the show. I am Adeni Ajishafe. Well, joining me in the studio is uh, Timothy Ayeku. Good to have you, Timothy. Thank you for having me again. Okay, let's set the ball rolling as we quickly start from the uh, second tier league of Nigerian football. Talking about the NNL, Nigerian National League, where so many matches were played over the weekend. Let's look at the result, starting from the uh, Northern Conference, Group A1, as we look at uh, Oya Sport. They lost uh, surprisingly against Sokoto United, 1-3. Mighty J2-0 against ABS, as Zamfara defeated Yobi Desert Stars, 3-0. CTFC against EFCC was a 1-0 in that particular encounter in the Group A. Uh, uh, a, A2, let's look at the resolving group A2 now, talking about the Nigerian National League uh, matches were also played. Malum Fashi defeated NAP FC by 1-0, Doma United 2-1 against GM Liberty. The Gaga Goldie Stars, they lost by two goals to nail, coming from Kebi United. Road safety, it was a draw against Gil Beret, while Kogi United also drew against uh, DMDFC. Well, we go straight to the Southern Conference as we look at the result uh, there. Van Dressa at the, over there in Lagos, they won against Oshu United 4-2. Ibom Youth, they lost against Bende Insurance in Benin 3-1. Giant Brillers, they showed their class as a giant. They defeated Abelkuta Summers by a long goal. Ikorodu City won, Gateway nil. Ikiti United won, J Atete. FC nil. And in Southern Conference Group B2, Crown FC of Bomosho, they won 2 1 against Apex Crane, while Rovers of Calabar won nil against Wally Wars was the standing. Go around FC 2 1 against Inewe United, while Sinosho drew 0 0 against Otasolo FC, Bayosa United 2 1 against FC 1 Rocket. Sporting Lagos, it was a draw between Ijebu United and Sporting Lagos. Those are the results in the Nigerian National League match day four as it went down across different states there in Nigeria just over the weekend, starting from the NNL. Although, stand, standing by from Lagos, let's talk to you. Are you there? Uh, okay, Amechi Agbo is not ready yet. Let's talk to you, uh, Timothy. Looking at all these results, uh, which of the match will you pick as your best match? Hmm. <laughs> it's a difficult one to pick because uh, a lot of games went down uh, during the weekend and uh, it amazes us to see that uh, Oya FC is the only club not doing well in terms of losing two home games already. They lost against Sokoto United, United yes, at they home. They are yet to win any other, uh, they, they, they are yet to win any game uh, so far in the league, although they played just three but with zero points. But then every other team is doing uh, well, aside the controversy with the EFCC and the CTFC. And you know, the Derby game will always be uh, one to talk about because of the you know, closeness between the two teams and mm. then the tension and the fans, closeness between them and all of that. Mm. Okay, uh, well, still you have not picked this the particular one I wanted to pick. I'm, I'm expecting to mention that CTFC versus EFCC. 
Yes, I, that's what I just talked about, the, the local derby. The, uh, it was a very tough game there at uh, Era 10 yesterday, uh, but uh, it didn't end well because the story, you know, uh, will always be sweet when you have a good ending. Mm -hmm. But uh, this time around, we had a situation again which we don't always want to talk about. about uh, that was about a controversial award. In was a, you know, and that was what gave CTFC the goal. You know, I watched the game and I was like, oh, this is not a penalty, but I don't know. The referee said, no, this is a penalty. And you, you, you saw what happened at the end of the game. The referee was beating, the fans had to encroach on the pitch. And you know, they gave him a treatment that, although we will also say that we don't want that in our league, but then our our referees should begin to do the right thing. Don't do, don't give any, any decision that is controversial. It's, it, it's not, I don't, I don't know what to say, but this is, this is an eyesore to our league. You don't continue to limit us. We are going to progress. We want our league to, you know, to move forward. But when you, when you continue to give, uh, when you continue to make some decisions that will make people to say no, 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 and actually make the fans to, you know, football is an emotional game. You get so when you, you you tamper with the emotions of the fans, mm. yes, we will always condemn such acts. But I'm sorry to say, we might continue to have such things. Okay, let's uh, talk. So, Amechi uh, Agbo in Lagos. Amechi Agbo, are you there? Amechi Agbo, joining us from Lagos. Let's talk about the NNL. Uh, the match day four saw uh, a particular scenario between City FC versus EFCC here in Abuja, where there was a, a, a penalty awarded and it was a bit controversial. People are looking at that particular issue because uh, we've been talking about referees trying to officiate very well, and that particular uh, awarding of penalty gave City FC the chance to beat EFCC. What do you say about this? Well, um, it's not uh, uncommon in a football scenario in Nigeria, particularly in our league, where uh, we have continued to see questionable um, decisions by the center referees. But then um, a lot of factors uh, culminated to what happened in that match yesterday at uh, Old Parade Ground. If you look at that match, most importantly, it was a derby. And of, of course, um, EFCC had also did a great job holding a city to a goalless draw at until that uh, dying moment. So the fans were actually looking out for um, a draw, at least in that match. But then all of a sudden there was a penalty. And then if you look at that penalty, there was an uh, infringement on uh, EFCC player before that or uh, that of a uh, city which the referee ignored and i was like if you could ignore that of a uh, efcc which was to me uh, a 50 50 chances of a uh, penalty how how could you just award that of a city but then we cannot um, say exactly what happened because the referee is at the center of the game and um, he knows the rule to apply but then we have to be very cautious you have to be very very cautious as uh, timothy said the football is uh, an emotional game and uh, when emotions are high, the fans lose their their sense of reasoning, and then uh, anything could happen as it happened like yesterday. By and large, also uh, EFCs also have to do uh, a great job in terms of discipline. I think uh, in their match against the FWC as well, uh, the league organizers uh, gave them um, uh, a, a, a strict warning and telling them to go and see no more in terms of their. Uh, uh, activities in the match against FWC as well. So it is an indication that uh, uh, it appears that all is not well in terms of disciplinary actions you know, within the, the, the camp of EFCC. So they need to do a lot more. Uh, they need to see if they can be able to win the game the, the best way possible for them instead of uh, having this type of a scenario. Because uh, if you couldn't win a match at uh, uh, 70, 80, it's something minutes, and then at that moment this type of situation happens. Uh, you don't need to blame anybody for taking any action. You should be responsible for whatever happened. But let's wait and see what the league organizers should uh, do in this regard. But then there should be a kind of uh, orientation for the all the referees uh, in Nigerian leagues uh, because this is becoming one issue too many.
Okay, good one there, okay, coming from Amir Chia Now, let's Amir look, Chia look at, uh, maybe I should just start the NPFL with you while uh, we just digress a bit from the NNL. Well, the biggest one over the weekend, the NPFL. A lot of matches were played, 10 matches, starting from Saturday to Sunday. But you look at almost all the uh, home teams won eight win from the home teams and you have Quara United, uh, that's the one that actually gave uh, an edge because they were able to win away. How do you see that particular one? Um, go away from their unenviable performances so far in the league. They've been able to They've, been, they've tried to uh, pick some points uh, uh, in their last uh, previous matches, but then yesterday um, they played against a big team and um, the result didn't go their way anyway, but they, they didn't do badly in that match. And then um, you, you talk about uh, another draw, I think that was uh, Abia Warriors and the Aqua United. Abia Warriors are holding the champions to a barren draw at home. It's also uh a good one for the defending champions but not so good a result for aqua i mean uh, abia warriors whose uh, performances in the league has been anything but uh, ex uh, but exceptional and then um rangers uh winning on saturday 1-0 against the gombe united uh heartland winning 1-0 uh against the niger tornadoes um i think uh then we have um uh rainbow stars uh, whitewashing uh, shooting stars in a local derby by 3-0 that yesterday. The, the league is actually uh, gradually uh, coming up to a, a, a period that uh, every point is very important because uh, if you drop any point in the league, of course, you're not going to recover it. Rather, you continue to push the remaining ones ahead. Now we have um, uh, Rivers United, uh, which are, who are on top of the league, uh, but they are not comfortable because uh, Plateau United are breathing very fast uh, on their neck. Uh, or uh, that seven points and um, uh, Rivers United at eight points. Uh, so it's a close marking between the two. And uh, I, I see uh, personally that this league could e go either way, either to Rivers United or Plateau United, if they continue to maintain this momentum. Unfortunately, uh, Remo Stars have, uh, uh, have gone down in the pecking order. Uh, I think they are currently fourth now with seven points or fifth. Uh, unlike when they were topping the league from the one uh, until at a point they lost their unbeaten uh, race and uh, they started uh, uh, being inconsistent in terms of performances. So so far so good, but there is one issue that I've been trying to um, get a proper clarification about it, but has not been very okay, uh, cleared for me. There was a particular ball bearing UEFA Champions League uh, logo that was used in one of the matches yesterday. I am here to get a clarification on how that ball got into a Nigerian league match and what actually happened as we had such ball in our league. But maybe in the course of uh, the, before the day runs out, we'll be able to know what actually happened. And maybe LMC should be able to uh, issue a statement on how a branded uh, UEFA Champions League ball could find its way into Nigeria Professional Football League. Oh, there, coming from Amochi, maybe you just start uh, probing LMC concerning that. Well, who knows? Maybe uh, that team has a pact with uh, UEFA Champions League. Who knows? Maybe that's why I decided to play that particular branded ball there. It's been a wonderful time with you. Wonderful analysis coming from Amochi Abu from Lagos. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And there now, you just saw what Abisha said. MPFL, a, a match branded UEFA and being used in the MPFL. How do you look at this? Ah, this is another laughable, you know, scenario in our football. But we will not want to wash our dirty linen in the public. We hope uh, it will be corrected. Maybe it was a mistake. Yes, it was a mistake, and our league is still a work in progress. So let's hope that. Uh, when are we going to stop all this work in progress? <laughs> really, let's just look at uh, the result again, talking about the MPFL, before we look at the way this table is standing right now, looking at the MPFL where Quara United, they won away 2-1 uh, against MFM in Lagos, while Heartland uh, pipped Niger Tornados by a long goal. Good one for Raymond Stars. It was a good one for them. They won 3-0 against Sunshine Stars. Eimba, they were beaten by Jakarta 2-0. Plateau United 1-0 against Katsina. While Lobby Stars, the match just 
saw earlier on the loss against Lobis uh, Wiki Torres, where Eddie uh, Dombraye, the coach of the team, spoke there. Abia Warriors, it was a goalless uh, match against Aqua United, while Enugu Rangers against Gombe ended by one goal to nil. Rivers United and Kano Pillars defeated their other uh, visiting teams, shooting stars of Ibadan and Nasarawa uh, United. Now, if you look at the way the table is standing right now, Rivers United are really uh, making their way. They don't want to drop the Belton at all. They are standing top with 35. Uh, just have to give it up to them, uh, talking about uh, the, uh, the, the league table there. Well, we just have to come back to the studio. Let's talk about this. Uh, uh, you look at the MPFL, the races between Plateau, Rivers, Remo, and probably can pick uh, maybe Aqua or Rangers thereabout. This season, it's been tough. Well, uh, Amechi said something which uh, we actually buy. Uh, he said uh, the race is probably going to end between uh, Rivers Angels and um, Rivers, Rivers United. United, sorry, and uh, Play Two. And if you look at these two teams, two teams are playing out. They uh, they have they both have good coaches, especially for Play Two United. They, they they have a very respected coach, Ilechuku, who has his record and has made his name a uh, name for himself in uh, with MFM. He's doing a good job with play too, and I think his technical know-how is helping to drive the team to success. Uh, but uh, with Rivers Angels, uh, Rivers, sorry, Rivers United, they are doing very well also. But something is playing out also. They have the money. They've been able to get good quality players, and that is helping them to run the race. And if you look at the MPFL, this is, uh, you know, Raymond Star started it. They were on top of almost uh, six or seven weeks before they have been off stage. And Plateau United and River seems to be the one having the momentum right now. Well, maybe it could still change. At least the, the league is still very long. Let's see what's going to happen. Uh, you know, we, we, we've seen such scenario in the MPFL where you see smaller teams come up at the start of the season to you know, show what they can do. But at the end of the day, can they stand the test of time? That's the question we'll ask them. And when you look at uh, why we are tipping Rivers United and Play 2 is because they are exp an experienced side. They've been there. And you cannot take that away from, you know, what we are talking about. So they have an edge over Remo. Remo are newcomers. They are doing well. And we hope that they will be able to be consistent with uh, their performance. They are already dropping a little. They need to pick up from where they are and get running again. Mm. Well, consistency is the key as we talk about the Nigerian Professional Football League matches that were played March the 17th, where Kora United being the only team that won away. And you have eight home team winning their games and you have uh, some draws coming there. Well, that's football. We just have to move away from the MPFL. Let's quickly uh, talk about the Nigerian women on that 17th. They went, they saw, they conquered over there in Kinshasa in DR Congo as they played the first leg of the World Cup qualifier on that 17 World Cup qualifier uh, that will be coming up in India. They were able to win uh, that particular uh, game and it was a good one. 3-0, they won that encounter and we just had to celebrate these ladies for what they did. It's not easy playing football, but they, for the fact that they were able to go there and they won that particular match, uh, that speaks a, a, volume, a lot of uh, volume. At least you look at the fact that when they were going, a lot of people were oh, we did be able to beat them, being an away game, but before coming to Nigeria, and that will be in the next two weeks now before they play. So, but winning away, 3-0, that shows, okay, just come home and finish the job. Uh, we've always had a fantastic team talking about women football in Nigeria. Uh, I'm a supporter, I'm a lover, of, I'm a, uh, a follower of women football in Nigeria. And I'll tell you that uh, we have the talent, especially at this level, talking about the under 17 and all of that. So it's not a surprise. Uh, it's not a surprise, but good job to the team and the coaching, uh, the coaching crew, because they've, they've been able to uh, finish the job. The job is finished. You can, you, can, uh, you can be rest assured that when these guys come home, the ladies come uh, back, they are going to just seal it. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a, the job has been done already. Good one there. Well, it, the job has been done by Nigerian Flamingos, as they call them. They are the under-17 of our women football team. And right now, they won the first leg over there in Kinshasa, 3-0. Now, the coach, uh, Coach Bayolo Okere, actually spoke. Let's listen to what he said. We plan, we have a good plan to, to come and win the match, and it works out for us. Well, it's a good game. Uh, both sides just exist in, for us the developmental program and uh, we've come here, we see the size of the team. First time we're able to study and see the way they play to be able to come out of them in second round. That's what we did to get the maximum point. We are here for maximum point and we have done that and we have achieved that. To get three points and uh, three goals, 
it's, it's, it's a day done appear, but I'm not I'm not feel with the complacency. As we go back home, winning the game is on the play, it's not that everything is okay. The area that we need to work on, we'll go in and go and work on that one and perfect our area. So that's that and if they're coming the next time, we'll look at some of the loopholes too. We'll punch it to that and then see, maybe we'll be able to seal everything up there in Nigeria. So we're hopeful that uh, we are going to the next day. Good one out there listening to Coach Bayo Oluo Kire on the 17 Nigerian women team. Uh, they were able to win their game. And it, I love the fact that he was very, very truthful with himself. Despite the, the winning, there's still some things they need to fine tune, at least concerning the team. And I love the fact that it was very, very factual. Uh, there's no perfect situation in football. Mm. You keep working. That's what the coach will tell you. No matter the win or the margin, goal margin, you keep working. So he has just said it as it is. They will come back home and, and finish the job, I can assure you that. Okay, so maybe they are, you are the media officer, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, let's move away from the women uh, football. At least we are smiling because the ladies did well. It was a fantastic performance for Nigeria under-17 Flamingos over there in DR Congo. Now, let's talk about the big one that happened over the weekend over there in England. Manchester City against Manchester United. It was a fight uh, between the two uh, teams from Manchester. Well, it was the one that actually wear the sky blue that won. <laughs> Uh, the blue, the color of the <laughs> sky in, in Manchester City right now is for City. They won that game. Good one there. It was a good one coming from Manchester City. Just have to give it to Kevin De Bruyne. Look at Riyad Mahrez, what they did. And you, you'll be wondering, okay, their former player, Jadon Sancho, was able to pull one back, but it was not enough as Man City went on rampage. And this has been very consistent. Guardiola against Manchester United. If you check the time that he has actually won the two leg uh, matches against United, that shows that really Man City have really outclassed Man United. Uh, although during uh, Ole Gunnar Social's uh, time, he was able to put a pause to mm -hmm. that because he ensured that he was not beaten at the Etihad Stadium. Uh, but unfortunately, the new coach, the interim coach, was unable to do that. And there were a lot of uncertainties be before the game. I mean, we, we, we've been hearing of some issues in Man United's dressing room. Uh, you know, they've not been doing well. It's either they get a draw or a defeat. They manage to win games. And Man City are gunning for the title. They really want to have it this time. And so it's a game that they must win to be able to tell the world that, yes, we And now they've widened the gap again. It's, they, they just have to do that because, you know, Chelsea, Liverpool, they're also winning. If you look at the way the table is actually looking right now, talking about the APL, Man City really, they've widened the gap again. Uh, you have 69, uh, 69 points there. Uh, Liverpool are second, uh, Chelsea third, Arsenal are standing four there. Arsenal. The big boys are arranging themselves now. Manchester United, where they, despite that loss, they are still standing fifth. West Ham United sports, the Tottenham of sports, will bump in Wanderers, Sam Tam Team, Dar Peking, that took from one to ten. Uh, Crystal Palace at standing ten, and you have Norwich, Watford, Burnley from the bottom there, looking at the way the table is standing. They are going just 10 matches to go, and now they have uh, 69, uh, six points ahead of Liverpool. Well, the talking point is uh, the, 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 the top four, and of course, Liverpool and Man City are showing that they will definitely be there. Chelsea are also not uh, relenting, but it's a fight between Man City and uh, between uh, Man United, Arsenal, and West Ham. Mm. Uh, the, 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 and maybe the, you add Tottenham okay, or you sport. could just add Tottenham because uh, why I'm refusing to call Tottenham is because mm. you know they have not been consistent. Inconsistency is their Arsenal problem. have also proved other uh, critics wrong that no, we can do it. Although it's not over until it is over. Mm. With ten games to go, I see uh, Arsenal and Man United doing the fight. Are you between, serious? Yes, yes. Between fourth and five? Fourth and fifth. Uh, that is fifth, or, rather. They're talking about Arsenal, Man U, 48, 47. Remember, oh. Arsenal, they have good three matches at hand to play. Three. Yes, they have three matches, so the but some of the no, games uh, are against the big guns. It doesn't uh, matter. that uh, You have totally written them that they won't win any one of the games <laughs> or what? Uh, I'm not writing them off, but uh, let's just uh, make do with what we have mm. um, uh, at hand. Because, you know, they, they, this season they've not shown that they can stand against the big teams. Let's be sincere. So that's that. the reason why you believe that, okay, out of the three matches, they should be able to win one. At least they should be able to win one. At well, least. 
Okay, let's wait and see. That's it on 360 Sport. Our time is fast. We just have to go now. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Timothy Ayeku. Thank you for having and me. And also special thanks to Amit Yagbo from Lagos. They are joining us to talk about the MPF and also the NNL. Sport is always business and fitness. I am Adeni Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.